Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Finding Yourself with Kyle Duffy. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you do, please consider hitting like on it and checking out the rest of my content up on my YouTube channel. And if you like what you see, please consider hitting subscribe and follow me along my YouTube and podcasting journey. I also have a podcast called Finding Yourself, which is available up on all major podcast platforms. So follow along on Spotify for weekly episodes. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Nightmare Alley, one of the nominations for Best Picture in this year's Oscars, which was overlooked. Let me know down in the comments if you've seen this movie, and if you haven't, take this video as your sign to go watch it. Nightmare Alley takes place in 1940s New York. In it, we follow Stanton Carlyle, who's down on his luck. He joins a circus, after which he befriends a clairvoyant and her mentalist husband. After learning all their tricks, he decides to start his own mentalist show in which he cons and swindles money out of the rich and wealthy. But looking for one last payday, he decides to con a very dangerous tycoon with the help of a psychologist who he met at one of his shows. On the lead up to the Oscars, I didn't know much about Nightmare Alley. I hadn't seen many trailers around the movie. I think I saw one in particular, but I didn't watch it all the way through. It was released up on Disney Plus, but before that, I didn't know much about the movie, the plot, anything, or even the cast involved. But after watching this movie, I can see why it was nominated for Best Picture. It has an amazing cast involved and the story is very unique, so let's get into it. The movie is directed by Guillermo del Toro who has produced excellent movies in the past including the Hellboy franchise with Ron Perlman, The Shape of Water as well as Pan's Labyrinth. And similar to the rest of his movies, Nightmare Alley is beautiful to watch. Each scene is so stunning and the cinematography behind this movie is excellent in my opinion. It's just such a great movie to watch visually. As well as having beautiful cinematography, Nightmare Alley has a host of amazing actors in their cast. Bradley Cooper obviously starring in the lead role, you have Kate Blanchett, Rooney Mara, Tony Collette, Paul Anderson from Peaky Blinders, Ron Perlman, Willem Dafoe, Richard Jenkins, Mary Steenburgen and Holt McCallany from Mindhunter. And obviously with such a talented cast, there were some excellent displays of acting in this movie. I loved Willem Dafoe's role in the movie, even though it was a subtle part, he poured a lot into it. You can see there was a lot of play with his character. I thought Bradley Cooper was excellent in the lead role. He brought a lot of charisma to his character and every time he was on screen, you were glued to his character. You were always following his lead. I thought Rooney Mara did an excellent job in her supporting actress role, as well as that Kate Blanchett had a couple of scenes with Bradley Cooper in which I think she stole the scene from Bradley Cooper. Her character was kind of mysterious. You didn't know her motives. And she used that in a lot of the scenes to build up the tension with her character. I also really liked the plot of Nightmare Alley. I thought it was a unique perspective to bring to cinema. I don't think we've ever seen a story told from the point of view of someone coming into a circus like that and wanting to be more than just someone who shovels shit or is an assistant to someone. You know, Bradley Cooper has big ambitions in this movie and you don't know whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. And that's why I really liked his performance. There's times in the movie where you're sympathizing with him and you're like rooting for him. But then near the end of the movie, you don't know how to feel about him, especially because he's the main character. You're following him the entire time and you want to root for him, but you know there's something sinister behind his actions every time he chooses to do something. It is for selfish reasons. So at the end of the movie, you're conflicted as to how to feel with the end result. So overall, I really enjoyed the plot. Like I said, it's a very unique perspective to give us as audience members. I thought in terms of their storytelling, Guillermo del Toro was very ambitious as to what he wanted to put across with the movie. With all that said, I want to now discuss why I think Nightmare Alley was overlooked by the likes of Coda and Power of the Dog and didn't get to realize its potential at this year's Oscars. Let's backtrack for a minute to what I said about there being an amazing cast in this movie. Which is true. There's an array of great stars in this movie, very talented cast. But the problem with that is, you can only give a certain amount of screen time to each member of the cast. And having such a talented cast like this in a movie always means you're going to underutilize some of your actors. Let's take a prime example, Paul Anderson in this movie. In my opinion, totally underutilized. Paul Anderson having his breakout role in the Peaky Blinders series. He's also been in great movies like The Revenant, along with Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy. He is actually cast in this movie, but in a non-speaking role. He appears on screen maybe in three or four scenes, but he has no lines. It actually took me 
a couple of minutes and a couple of scenes to realize that it was actually Paul Anderson. The character he plays in the movie is treated like an animal and is called the Geek. Willem Dafoe's character explains very early on that the circus hires the Geek as a sideshow attraction and as a freak show attraction. So the geek is normally someone who's an alcoholic, homeless, a vagrant, someone that society won't miss and someone that the circus can exploit without any real repercussions. And Paul Anderson plays that character in this movie. Again, I love Paul Anderson and once I realised it was him I was like excited and I thought okay, hopefully he has a big role in this. But again, just underutilised. The same goes for Ron Perlman. He has maybe three scenes where he's talking for more than five minutes. Tony Collette, a great actress, underutilized. She has a couple of key scenes with Bradley Cooper's character at the beginning of the movie, kind of shapes him into the character he becomes later on in the movie and has an influence there. But other than that, she doesn't play a big part. I just really felt that most of the actors in this cast were underutilized. Willem Dafoe is such an excellent character actor and he only really has three, four scenes to get everything in to his performance that he needs to. Tony Collette, Ron Perlman, Paul Anderson, these actors really don't get enough screen time. And I feel that's where the movie failed. They didn't utilize the actors they had on screen. Because if they did, this movie would have been so much more entertaining. Let's get into the pace around the movie and the flow of the movie. I really enjoyed the first half of the movie. I thought the pacing was excellent. I was entertained throughout. I was involved in the story and I was invested in the story. I cared what was happening with the characters. But once that second act hits, the pacing slows down. And my theory on why the pacing slows down immensely and it becomes very boring to watch in places is because they hyper focus on three characters in particular. The tone in the first act, you are rooting for Bradley Cooper's character. It's kind of like an ambitious climb to success. That's the tone of the first act. You see Bradley Cooper wanting to be more and succeed in life. You see him fall in love with Rooney Mara's character and want to take care of her. But then everything shifts in the second act. You get a different perspective of Bradley Cooper's character. And then you're introduced to characters in the second act that align more with Bradley Cooper's selfish side. Kate Blanchett plays a very mysterious psychologist who is only out for herself for her own benefit. Richard Jenkins plays a narcissistic tycoon who doesn't care about anyone but himself. And to me in this movie the first act represents dreams and ambitions of getting to where we want to be in our success and the second act portrays how we act once we get there and the narcissism that creeps into our personality once we get the success we desire and how it's never enough and we need more and more. And in my opinion, Bradley Cooper's performance as Stanton Carlyle is a perfect personification of this. I just felt the second half of the movie didn't flow as well as the first. I wasn't as invested in the characters. I didn't care as much as I did in the first act. And it took me a while to realize why I wasn't invested in the second half as I was in the first. And I think it's because in the first half of the movie, there's so much potential for storylines. There's so many different characters you can explore. But with a change of scenery in the second half, you feel like all those storylines are being ripped away and you have to hyper focus on three characters. And if you don't fully invest in these three characters, it's going to be hard for you to enjoy the second half of this movie. I just felt like it was a sudden change of pace and it came out of nowhere. And sometimes movies can do that and it can work out. I just felt like it didn't work out for Nightmare Alley. Another reason this movie let me down was I could see twists coming. I could see what was going to happen before it happened. Even with the ending, I predicted the ending 10 minutes before it happened. There was really only one twist I didn't see coming in this movie and it comes with Kate Blanchett's character. But even that twist felt forced to me. It felt like something they just threw in to make sure that they hooked the audience till the end. Speaking of the ending, I really enjoyed the ending of this movie. I thought it was very poetic the way things ended for Bradley Cooper's character. If you've seen Nightmare Alley, you'll know exactly what I mean. I did enjoy Nightmare Alley. I would recommend sitting down and watching it. But overall, I feel like I missed out on Best Picture in this year's Oscars for two reasons. Number one was the pacing. 
act two took me out of the movie entirely and secondly they underutilized the great cast they had involved for my rating i give nightmare alley a 3.5 out of 5 let me know what you thought of this movie in the comments below hope you all enjoyed today's video if you did please hit like and subscribe for more content like this this has been finding yourself with kyle duffy thanks for listening